Hello and welcome to Deconstructed, where we take an old Watch Mojo Top 10 and then break it down entry by entry to see why things placed where they did. Today's list is a real doozy back from 2014, the Top 10 Nintendo games. Not like Nintendo Racing games, not Nintendo Mario games, just Nintendo games. Lots to talk about, let's take a look at the ranking. All right, like I said, plenty to talk about, uh, especially because that list is a bit out of date. So let's meet our panel first. We got Mike, who is our freelance manager, right? Yeah, all the applications come to me. I hire people. Just want to say, Dan, I've been on Mojo Talks. That set, not as nice as this set. This no. one is phenomenal. We got new chairs. And we got Dave, who is a longtime right. editor and pretty integral to the video game department. Pretty much these guys, yeah. Okie dokie. Guys, I know you're longtime Nintendo fans, and I think we all ranked this list together way back in 2014. It was his idea. It was his idea. Right, yeah. because we would have never thought to rank Nintendo games if it wasn't for you, Mike. Too obscure. <laughs> too obscure, too yeah. niche. Okay, let's get right into it. Okay, entry number 10, Star Fox 64. One of my all-time favorites. Oh, yeah? <laughs> oh, yeah. This is a quintessential, like, for me growing up, when this came out, it blew my mind. Yeah, well, blew I mean, go ahead. Yeah, no, when it came out, though, like, the graphics blew me away, the rumble pack. That's why I remember the big cardboard box with the oh, rumble right. pack. It came with it included, and yeah, I had my brother, and we were playing in that first level where you beat the guy, and he's like, Andros, I failed you, and he explodes. It, it didn't just explode. <laughs> he didn't just explode. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 keep going. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, this game nailed it as an on-rails space shooter. Like, they haven't been able to do a good, as good of a job as, as they did back then. Like, the Super Nintendo was great, but it was more, you know, it, it wasn't, you know, it, it, has it, hasn't, well. it, it hasn't aged well. It's kind of hard on the eyes. This game aged not bad. This yeah, game, they're... especially the 3DS uh, remake, well, not remake, but like port where they made it. It's cleaner. a remaster, I think. Yeah, re yeah, remaster. re yeah, remastering. Now, let me ask you guys this. Why... Is it at number 10 if it's so good? Or would you, we're talking if about, we were to do it again? Well, the thing is, we're talking about top 10 Nintendo games here. Right. These guys have, like, a, a keen eye for quality. But, but that being said, like, even though I absolutely love this game, this was probably the very first game I ever 100% completed. Okay. Like, all the way through. That being said, because there's been so many other great Nintendo games that have come out since then, I probably would switch that, that switch this one out with Splatoon, or more specifically Splatoon Two. At number, t would you knock it right off the list? Like as much as I love it, I probably would have to say yes, be just because of how good Nintendo has become over the last couple of years. Oh boy, Dave destroying I, childhoods left and right. My own, my own. This is one of my all-time favorite games. Insanity. It's got to stay on the list. I'm fine with it at ten. Personally. Like, I keep getting more fond of it the more they bring out more Star, Fo Star Fox games that don't live up to it, like Star Fox Zero, which is also a remake. I, I, I did like Star Fox Zero. I'll, give it, I'll say that. Okay, gentlemen, let's move on because w w I think once we talk about other entries, we're going to get a better sense of how important Star Fox is and yeah. where we would rank it. I consider it a sacred cow. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, here we go again at entry number nine with Fire Emblem Awakening. Now, here's the thing. I think a lot of people, you know, their childhood is rooted in something like Star Fox. And, you know, you'd show this to a lot of people and they'd be like, what the hell is Fire Emblem Awakening? Like, Star Fox 64 was so good. Why is this a little bit better? Well, there's a lot of reasons why. First of all, there's a lot more uh, replay value with this, especially with the way you can uh, get all your characters together with... Just strategies? Yeah, just strategies. Oh, and just the little... Yeah, yeah they can yeah, do kissy, yeah, kissy that, stuff that, too. Yeah, that, 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 that. Um, there's also, yeah, like you, like you said, there's a whole lot of strategies. There's also permadeath in this game, so right. the story can change based on if your characters die in battle. Right, I mean, I just... It's, you know, a lot of the games... We're going to be comparing... By the way, we set a rule for this... Uh, this list only one entry per franchise. So it's all gonna be apples to oranges. Every yeah. single thing is gonna be really hard to compare. But I think this is even harder than almost anything else on the list mm -hmm. because it's just, it's such a deep, it's not a simple game. And almost everything else that Nintendo makes is incredibly simple. You can put the controller in a six year old's hands and they're gonna, they're gonna kick ass at Mario or Star Fox or Animal Crossing, anything. But I will say, as, as far as turn-based strategy games though, this is probably one of the better games that you can get, like probably. And, and on any system as well. So would but, you say it's still securely at number nine if we were to re-rank it today? I think so. 
It would definitely be so. the Fire Emblem game. We would yeah, do. I definitely would be the Fire Emblem game we'd go with. You, you have to keep a Fire Emblem on the list because it is, like you said, something deeper. It's a it's a tactical RPG. It is for the more hardcore and for the older, perhaps, players. So you need one on the list. Is it this game? I think this game was a it's a nice bridge between the old fans and the new ones. It kind of saved the franchise from really fading. Right. Like it came at the right time. You it know? sort of reawakened it. Pretty much, yeah. I don't, okay, I, don't I think know what that's you're talking good... about. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, let's move on. And on a pun. Okay, so for our next entry, I think this basically symbolizes. Oh boy. Oh my God. I I I am gonna have to ask what's wrong with Dave. But I was gonna say the entry number nine and entry number eight basically it just shows how much Dave and I were playing our 3DSs in 2014 because I was clearly playing a lot of Fire Emblem mm -hmm. and Dave was playing a lot of Animal Crossing. Dave, what have you got to say, buddy? What's wrong? Do we have a defibrillator? Yeah, I know. I put 700 hours in this game. You, you it, sure? it pretty much took over my life for two years. So, oh my god. You're sure you didn't just like le leave your 3DS? You should get a job. Yeah, <laughs> you, sure, you sure you just didn't leave your 3DS on back? Like, no, I, and then I, I played this game since it probably a, a month after it came out. I played it every single day, probably until 2015. It was so time consuming, and yet I just couldn't stop playing it. Um, you know, it's okay. funny because I remember him talking about that and showing how many hours he logged, and I couldn't believe it. I spent most of my time on the GameCube Animal Crossing right. with my three siblings, and we had the there's a post box and you could talk to each other, and that was really cool. So by the time this came out, I have it on the on the uh, on the portable DS. It was right. DS, right? Yeah, 3DS. 3DS. I get confused. Sorry. Mm. I have it. I have because I have so many versions of Animal Crossing. It's fine, it's fine. But after the first one, I just couldn't put in 700 hours. <sighs> I'll be honest. After the first one, and you finally you you beat it, and you spend like all that time, you realize it's basically just glorified like fruit picking and well, it's just delightful busy work. But it's it's kind of a pre iOS type. Well, the thing is, like, it's one of those games where you don't really uh, realize how much time you're putting into it because, like, usually. Each play session usually lasts about an hour or so. Let me ask you And I you just guys kept this. on playing this uh, day in, day out. Yeah, you just it, it, it really helps to check in, right? Yeah. Like, let me ask you this. Why would this, would you guys, if we were just only the entries we've got, not thinking about swapping in new stuff, but do you still think after four more years, Animal Crossing New Leaf is more important than Star Fox 64? Or Fire Emblem Awakening? <laughs> yes, unfortunately, considering how much... All right. How soul crushing it can I be. want you guys at home to let us know if you support that because I feel like the comments are not going to be the greatest. Actually, you know what? Speaking of comments, I got one for Fire Emblem before we move on to our next entry. Fire Emblem, greater than Legend of Zelda. Thoughts? Think about it. Just date. I'm sure the Legend of Zelda will come up on this list. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so we're seven entries in and we find or not seven entries in, four entries in, and we finally got into something that's near and dear to my heart and my childhood. Donkey Kong Country 2, Diddy's Conquest. Such a good game. <laughs> so good. Tell us how you really feel, Dave. I would say that for this franchise, it's The Empire Strikes Back. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, it's something about sequels, man. Like, you... They double down on what's good, but then by the time they get to the third one, things get distorted. It's all—it's that real perfect sequel. Love the pirate well, theme. Yeah, the, it's one of those cases where everything goes together. Like I love the 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 duo between Diddy and Dixie. Like they work so well together. Uh, the, there's also the theme, that, as you said, that goes well. Like yeah. it's like at the time, like Donkey Kong Country, when Donkey Kong Country first came out. Its graphics blew everyone away. Yeah, it was eye candy. Right. Like, like it was eye candy. You couldn't believe what, it. What they did with Donkey Kong Country 2 was one step better, where not only were the graphics good, they also uh, were related to a theme that really uh, felt like it was... Uh, the pirate theme, yeah. Yeah, that really felt like it was integral to the gameplay. Level design, everything was tighter. Mm -hmm. oh, it it's was... the, mu the music. I still, when I'm like doing like uh, just data entry at work, I just listen to yeah, David, some of... Yeah, David Wise's soundtrack is incredible in this game. I do find it really ironic though, still looking back all these years later, how it's, it didn't have Donkey Kong as a playable character. Neither nope. did the third one, but it's like, so the this best is, Donkey this Kong... Is, this is some pretty false advertising. Honestly right? though... Yeah, well he's saving him, right? But he, Honestly he's... though, and I know this might sound controversial, I actually think this game is better without Donkey Kong in it. In what sense? Well, basically because Donkey Kong is this really strong, hulking, uh, powerful character. But when you have like two characters who are both inexperienced, yeah, both inexperienced, and both have a lot to prove for, for themselves, that is what really sells the game for it's me. It's a harrowing story of being behind enemy lines for sure. Now, 
I would, just a, a little <coughs> quick thing about the ranking before we move on. Uh, I, I want to push this higher, but I'm looking down the list. Everyone, everyone yeah, can see the, I, the graphics right here, actually. But we, we're now out of the like sort of like, eh, maybes. From here on out, it's going to be like the all stars. Yeah. So that's the only reason I say that like this can't serious. go any higher. I would have said the same thing as well. And to I be just want to say I'm still a little like miffed that it wasn't included on the SNES Classic. First thing I did, don't want to go to jail, but I may or may not have added this to my Super Nintendo Classic. The uh, Watch Mojo and its affiliates do not support Mike's actions. Next entry. May or may not have. Okay. Number six, and I told you guys we were going to get to the heavy hitters, Mario Kart 64. Now, I know we all love Mario Kart. We all love Mario Kart 64. It's a big mainstay in the lunchroom. My question to you guys is, uh, first on ranking, forget which Mario Kart we're going to go. We're going to put a Mario Kart on the list, no doubt. Is it going at number six? Like, below Metroid Prime, below Pokemon, below... Well, but those two, basically. Not really, no. I don't think. No? Like, because, like, compared to, like, you look here, <laughs> like, the rest of these uh, entries here, they are all super heavy hitters. I thought David lost his mind for a second. Um, well, go my ahead. opinion is that, that Mario Kart and Smash Brothers are the quintessential ones you have to have on every, con like, every generation going back as far as I can remember. It's got to have a Smash. You've got to have those two. Have Friends come over. These are the two main options for multiplayer, right? Right. So I would kind of move this closer to Smash, and then Metroid could probably move closer to the top three. Yeah, I gotta really? That. You got Metroid? Okay, sorry, what are you, what are you disagreeing with, Dave? Well, I, I, like, I think that it's fine where it is. <clears throat> fine at number six, yep. very controversial choice. Okay, so now, second question, quick, fast, before we move on, if we were to pick a Mario Kart, there have been more that have come out since, specifically eight and eight deluxe, mm -hmm. uh, would we still go with 64? I would still go with 8 Deluxe, um, mostly because I think it's mo the most refined out of the entire Mario Kart franchise, and also the one with the most tracks, most characters, and definitely a lot more variety as well, especially seeing as with the Switch version. My, my counterpoint to that would be that it's essentially refining the things that were laid as the solid groundwork in, in 64. Though I would counter that as saying, like, it, was, it laid the groundwork, but it's a bit unpolished because there's a lot of exploits in the tracks. We were talking before, and Mike, you were saying that the lack of polish makes it your choice, there's am I right? So, there's so much charm, it's crazy. You could, there's cheats, like you could jump off of a track and, and they don't stop you and you could, like we, that became part. That's why part. I shouldn't be there. Oh, no, but that's what makes it so much fun like this many years later that I could revisit it and find something I didn't see. Whereas in the new one, you try to do something like that? No, you stay on the track. You were also saying that the virtual console version. V the virtual console version of this game, they, they took away all the jaggies, they fixed the frame rate and it's, for some reason, because it's not gross, it's gross. I need it on a real 64 yeah. playing it like this. Uh, yeah, Mario Kart 8, it's awesome. I was burned because I have the Wii U version and he's got the Switch version and I had to pay for DLC and the battle mode sucks and they never fixed that, so I'm bitter. I understand and that. Friends come over, this one is still the pro full package. I never thought we would end an entry about Mario Kart on such a down note, but alas, here we are, moving on to entry number five. Okay, so number five, Metroid Prime. I'm going to flip it now and say, okay, let's assume that a Metroid entry is a lock at number five. Would we pick Prime? Would we pick Prime 2? Would we pick Samus Returns? Or would we pick, as Second the End says, which is a, this is a comment, by the way, uh, Super Metroid is better than Prime. This was a very, very tough decision because they are both really good games. Yeah, like, I agree. Super Metroid laid an amazing groundwork. It really improved upon what came before, but it's been copied so many times. It's, it is the Metroid it's, half of the Metroidvania. Yeah. It's, that's right, exactly. Prime was, in my mind, it edged it for the reason that it made it happen in 3D, which no one thought you could do. Yeah, there aren't, re this genre, this really isn't a genre. The, the, the concept of a 3D Metroidvania, that's pretty unique, well, right? Well, Dark Souls kind of like, Dabbles in that a little okay, bit. Okay, good point. Okay, yeah, first so, person yeah. Metroidvania. Um, taken, yeah. So yeah. wait, so we're still secure with Prime? You would, you're... You you know, yeah, like, I, 
I, it's a very tough one because yeah, it's it is for me still Metroid Prime, but only just just barely, yeah. Yeah, because because it's pretty much what Mike said. Like it's the fact that it took the the formula into three D. It's much more immersive as well because you're in the first person view. Right. Like you have cases where like you can have uh, like. Uh, glare effects. Um, yeah, you, you, when, you, when there's a flash, you see Samus's eyes on the inside of your yeah, visor. Yeah, and also you can see, like, uh, if you see enemies' guts, like, the splat, splash all over your visor, which is hilarious. Can I throw in a hot take? Sure, hot take. From the, I played the trilogy, the Metro Prime trilogy. I actually, looking back in hindsight, the one I enjoyed the most was probably the third one. Third one. You, you knew it. Yeah, I well, don't no know one why. likes the second one, and you had a hot take. I just so. like I just like how it combined the weapons. You didn't have to, you know. I I liked playing it on the Wii it. because you like there was those like it motion was, control it's actions. It's so stupid, which but you're doing gimmicky. this. Was, but yeah, so so if you like if you like Super Metroid or Prime, they're both they're almost at the same level. It's really it's hard. It's like the series. But like yeah. we said, this one just it's like by one grain of rice it tipped the scale. Like if you're gonna say Super Metroid, but I, I understand that because yeah, you can literally say either one. You you could be right on both of them. All right. Well, according to, once again, second, the END, Super Metroid, much better than Prime. Let's move on. All right, number four is Super Smash Brothers Melee, or as I s pronounced it back in 2014, Melee. Yes, and, uh, the, and the, the, the uh, viewers noted that. Uh, I got a comment here from The Real. He says, pronounce Melee correctly, seriously. 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 It's a serious issue. Malay. Actually, you know what? I'm am just gonna. I know how to pronounce it properly, and I'm just gonna keep or melee. It's gonna. I'm just gonna switch to melee. Is, so melee, everyone melee, is, melee. everyone's uh, angry at me. Melee, melee, giving melee, me melee. Malays. Okay. So there's been a lot of Smash Brothers games since. There's been, well, there's a new one on the way, but there's yeah. at least uh, four. four. Yeah. And coincidentally, well, this is Saturn. Five. Well, like, if you count like the 3DS and Wii U. Yeah. yeah. We don't um, have to. Okay. We. So would we pick this one? Again, this is a very, very tough choice because the thing that makes um, Smash Bros. Melee uh, constantly mm -hmm. uh, a mainstay is the esports scene. Right. But here's here's where I have a very, very hot controversial take. bone to pick. I think esports ruined Melee. Oh boy. Care to elaborate? Well, one of the main reasons why is because like when you play it competitively. You also kind of have to take away a lot of the fun that made uh, Melee so fun to begin with. Like you have to turn off the items, you can only play a certain number of stages. And if you try to play with your, your favorite character, you will often get your ass kicked because usually there's only like nine characters that the pros usually choose. Does this one choose. have Meta Knight? I always pick No, Meta this Knight. one does not have Meta Knight. Uh, um, yeah, okay, but forget the esports for a second. I'm at my house, I have all the games, which one am I playing? This one I've revisited. I actually I sold it back in the day for some reason because I was crazy and I rebought it and somehow I got it not at a crazy price. This one, try to rebuy it now. It'll cost you a fortune because it's amazing. Okay, so here's my question about the ranking then. When the new one was announced, the internet exploded. That always happens. And I feel like it blew up even more than when they announce other major games. Is I, that I have a theory. What's that? My theory is because not a lot of people own the Wii U. I own a Wii U. Okay, yeah. That they kind of skipped that one. Right. Right. I know it was on the 3DS. Okay, so what you're saying I, is. But a lot of people, let's say they, they're like, I'm not going to play it on the 3DS, going to strain my eyes. They didn't have the Wii U one. If you did have a Wii U one like me, you have to get an adapter if you want the Gabe King controller. Or you have so many variations of controls. A lot of that, hoops to jump through. Oh my God, if I have like a nephew over, I have a table full of different control options, their mind explodes. Forget it. <laughs> so I think people have not played. Uh, a a Smash Brothers game in a long time. Since yeah. since Brawl. Since Brawl. Right? So that's why they're so hyped. Okay. I understand that. I like that point a lot. I think that's a pretty good way to end that. Mm -hmm. All right. The uh, the Nintendo franchise that never that I never remember is a Nintendo franchise. Pokemon. Um, again, we're going with gold and silver instead of red and blue. Controversial. Well, not really. Here's the thing. Red and blue has not aged well. Okay, fair enough. Here's why. Here's why. Tell me. First of all. It's very unbalanced. Psychic Pokemon are way too overpowered. It's all it's very exploitative. Uh, I will say also, there's not much of a post-game content. Like you catch Mewtwo, that's it. Like once you beat all the trainers, that's it. Okay. This one you can actually revisit and take on other trainers I again. Think it kind of goes back to what we were saying about Mario Kart, where the Super Nintendo mm. version, and then it went in a crazy leap with the next generation. Okay. So with this gen, I think there was there was two regions, right? 
There was a lot more content. It's the only game in, in the Pokemon yeah. series that's done two regions as well. Still, right? Okay. Yeah, which is, it's, I'm surprised they, it's still the, the only The one. amount of Pokemon exploded, and it's given the best Pokemon since. So there's so many versions. There will be nostalgia goggles for which one is your favorite, but okay. I, I think this one is... The Empire Strikes Back. Yeah. Of <laughs> uh, and by the way, by the way, when we also talk about Gold and Silver, we're also talking about Hot Gold and Soul Silver. That's the remake on DS. Now, so yeah, if you if you're looking for Hot Gold and Soul Silver, it's also for, counts for that too. Okay, fair enough. Because I, I got someone here, Chris Thompson, who says, in my opinion, the remakes of Gold and Silver beat the originals and should have been on this list. Yes, the games are pretty much the same, but the mechanics were far more refined in the fourth generation did we than the not, second. Did we not? Show those in the clip? We did, we did. We oh, did. Okay, so we're good. We did. He, Chris is just, he's just sharing his opinion, and that's what we want you guys to do. What's your favorite Pokemon game? Let us know. Uh, so, you can't talk about Nintendo without talking about nostalgia. This is my probably biggest nostalgia trip, but as we have done with probably every entry on this list, my biggest question is, did we get this choice right in terms of which Mario game? Especially considering now Odyssey is out, um, Super Mario 3D World came yeah. out afterwards. So, great Mario game or greatest Mario game? Uh, I still say it's the greatest. I have a see. I have the nostalgia nostalgia goggles, but right. I'm watching it now from a different perspective because I'm teaching my your, your my child. three year old to play it, and uh, my nephews. My I taught them how to play video games with this, right? Mm. And I tried the other ones, and this is the one they stuck to. And I'm like, I'm trying to figure out why it's. The appeal, the way it looks, 20 years from now, is still going to look just as good. It, it, it does. You it's know? a good-looking game. Good soundtrack. Good fun. Dave, I know you agree with our commenter here, Christian Branser, who says, I think Mario 3 is better than World. Yes, I definitely agree. I definitely think it, Mario 3 was the better game. Tell me well, why. Well, for one, I feel like the level design was much more like creative and stand out. Like the one with uh, the, the shoe. Like you, you didn't get anything like that in Mario World. Uh, uh, all right, also... Dave, let me tell you why you're wrong. There's... Plenty of very unique levels in Mario World. There's the one with the dolphins, the one with those giant caterpillars, the one with the cheese cutter things. I there's, hate those things. Uh, everyone hates those things. That, oh, that level is terrible. Look, yeah, um, that, that, that horrible, there's also one horrible Jeff tubular level where you like inflate and you have to keep getting those stupid pee balloons. Um, look, you look at Mario World and the appeal is not going away. And there's so many secrets, more than Mario 3. The Star World. Oh my God, the secrets are insane. Like. There's so much to love about that game. Now, I kind of wish we could have gone with one 2D Mario game and one 3D Mario game. Yeah. Because there's so much to choose from from both baskets, and I'm very partial to Mario 64. What do you think about that, Dave? Do you think we should... Well, yeah, if a, we were to include, like, you know, just kind of break our rule there and have one 3D one, one 2D one? It, it would be a bit confusing, I would say. But if I had to pick a 3D one, I would actually go with uh, Mario Galaxy 2. Galaxy 2 over 64? Yeah. I think like, like your 3D pick before nostal we go. Nostalgia goggles won't let me, but I love Mario Galaxy 2. That's incredible. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, all the 3D ones are great, except uh, I'm not the biggest Sunshine fan. Not <laughs> yeah. Sunshine. I know, that's, I know if you if you get into it, you love it, you love it. But yeah, it's it's mm -hmm. definitely the black sheep for sure. Yeah. Okay. Definitely, no one's gonna argue about this or our next entry. Let's get to that. Um, you know what? Just before we begin our number one entry, I think Link could use a little bit more length in his tunic here, that if, if your tunic would get you in trouble at a Catholic girls' school, I think it would get you in, like, I th you could use an extra inch on it. Hyrule's pretty windy, too. Hyrule oh, yeah, is yeah. very <laughs> windy, <laughs> but very, very open-minded. Their people yeah. are very open-minded. Yeah. They got fish people running around, so this little, anyway. Okay, number one, Ocarina of Time. Now, this one, I feel, there's a lot of debate around this game as to, like, you know, a lot of people consider it the best game of all time. I know we put it on an ancient list as the best game of all time. Yeah. But it ne didn't necessarily age well. A lot of people these days don't really get it. So, again, if we were to pick a Zelda game, assuming Zelda is our number one pick, would it be Ocarina of Time still? If it was back in the day, I would say yes. But because it's today, I would actually say it's Breath of the Wild. I actually back that. Breath of the Wild, better than Ocarina and of Time. I mean, I just want to be clear. Breath of the Wild, the dungeons aren't as interesting. They're they're a different kind of interesting, but you only got four. They're not as right. You, you know, they're not. Yep. No. No. You know what I mean? They're they kind of like dungeons. it kind of bleeds together. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Absolutely. So there's that. But when you're playing it, oh my god, like there's that feeling. I was a kid again, and yeah, it's rare like, for a game to do that. It's it was one of those moments where I just had this constant sense of awe, like every single 
uh, corner I looked around, like every single discovery. Like I got this back in Ocarina of Time. Like I thought it was amazing right. back in the day, but Breath of the Wild it blew it out of proportion. Um, I would counter that to say that okay, in relation to the question I asked you, where I was like, if we were to swap it for a Zelda game, here's the thing. I feel that Breath of the Wild is a fantastic open world game. It is a fantastic adventure game. I don't really think it's a, all that great as a Zelda game. You were talking about the dungeons. I feel like the dungeons are a huge part. Um, you're talking about talk about the, just the structure of the game. I feel that the structure, there's a cup. I just didn't get that Zelda game feeling I usually get. I think it was more of the case like the Zelda formula was getting stale at the time because yeah, I think I, there was a lot of criticism after Skyward Sword came out right. that it was getting really old and stale because it felt like it was dragging on and you were on a very, very ch ball and chain path. Okay, let's, let's uh, separate ourselves from whether talking about this is our favorite Zelda game and let's just think about for a second if we were to include a list of the top 10 games that Nintendo has ever made and we would not include Ocarina of Time as any of the 10. Do you think that makes sense? Look, Ocarina of Time. One, one entry per, one entry per, yes or no question, one entry per franchise rules aside. Top 10 Nintendo games not including Ocarina of Time. Forget about number okay, one. Well, you could also probably supplement with A Link to the Past as well. I'm very partial to that one, but Ocarina of Time, yes, when it came out, holy shit. I, you know, I was there when it came out. I played it right from the beginning. It, it changed everything. It was incredible. I tried revisiting it very recently within the last like six months. Right. Ah, oh, yeah, it's it's kind of hard to get, it's weird. I feel nostalgia goggles play a huge role in Ocarina of Time, but Breath of the Wild, it just feels, like I know it doesn't, it might not have those Zelda yep, elements, yep, yep. but as a game, it's, it's like if I had to choose which one to play right now, I would go Breath of the Wild. I think the biggest factor with uh, Ocarina of Time is that there have been uh, other better games with better combat that have come out over the years. So oh, absolutely, but you have to judge these games for, uh, for how, for how, how they, they were at the time. Yeah, exactly. So, um, you, and I, and, but that's the thing is like those other games they built on Ocarina of Time, which is why Ocarina of Time is so significant. Let's go with one YouTube comment before we leave. Prototype One said, I left immediately after num number one was announced. I mean, it's a really good game, but there are better Zelda games in the series. That's what like Breath of the Wild. And they keep giving this one way too much praise. You know well, what, this, this comment was made a year ago, so Breath of the Wild was not out yet. Uh, I mean, I'll admit it's become a bit of a Citizen Kane for yeah. video games. It's like, is it even that, so, it's just accepted as the so best So it's place in history, it's secure, we know it's one of the greatest games of all time. I do think they're able to make Zelda into a more modern, fun thing. Down the road, I'm sure the next Breath of the Wild will be more Zelda-y, and then we'll have another debate. Okay, we'll see last then. question, quick answers before we go. If we were to do this again, would you think it would make sense to swap uh, Zelda and Mario? And please answer this in the comments too. Uh, like, Zelda or Mario? I, I still think Zelda is number one. Mike? Zelda is a, is a deeper experience for older gamers. Don't kill me, mm -hmm. internet. No, no, it's fine. But Mario is, that is the game that most of us grew up playing and learning and how the new generation of, of, of gamers are learning. To me, Mario is... It's Nintendo. It's yeah. Nintendo. You, if, you, if you were to kill Mario, it'd be different than if you killed Link. They'd well, both yeah. be bad. <laughs> okay, uh, well guys, thank you so much for joining me today yeah. on the panel. Mike, it was good to have you on this first Mojo Plays episode. We're gonna have you back soon, probably. Yep. Dave, always a pleasure. And uh, you guys, it's always good for you to join us. Please comment as much as you want. We want that sweet, sweet user engagement. And let us know what other top tens you want to see us uh, deconstruct. Just before we go, though, I will say we had seven HMs on this one. Yeah, seven honorable mentions. So if we forgot your, uh, if we forgot one of your favorite Nintendo franchises, go check out the original list. Make fun of how bad my VO is, and check back next Friday when we have another deconstructed. Thanks for watching Mojo Plays. Be sure to subscribe and click on the link in the description below to check out our suggestion page and vote on what content you'd like to see us cover next.